Hello, Fun Robotics Network. My name is Anthony, and here on Fidalysis, we're going to look at an Ohio match, and we're going to see how strategies are different. So the matches may not always be as high of scores, but we can still see what strategies go into it, and how every match still has something to learn. And we're going to look at that here on Fidalysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Studica Robotics is inspiring teams to build better robots with their new array of FTC team options. Check out their updated bevel gears and Maverick hex shaft motors, planetary gearbox options, and 6mm hex components and shafts for extreme power transmission. Go to studica.com slash robots to learn more and apply for discounts. So starting off, we're going to introduce some of our teams. On the Red Alliance, we have Team 10084, Team Calamari, and Team 6133, the Nuts. And on Blue Alliance, we have Team 6298 Tech Titans and Team 17978 Robokai. So for the majority of this match, we're going to be focusing on the Red Alliance uh, and the strategies that come from this alliance here. So we're at the Central Ohio Qualifier. And so starting off the match, we can obviously see, you know, Red and Blue, they're going to be hitting from, they're going to be shooting into the goals. And we kind of see this interesting little movement from Team Calamari, kind of how they open the gate and do that all in one movement. I think that's really clean. And it's something that's really impressive to me as a former programmer. I think that, that how they were able to do that was really nice and creative. And so we can then see them shooting up all the balls right. So we then see this interesting move right here, which I'm actually really impressed and didn't think about and didn't expect Team Calamari to do. So we see them actually going to clear the gate and at the exact same time actually intake from the gate. So with me looking at the robot, I wouldn't have actually expected them to do that, but it was really impressive because they were able to do that with such ease and sure. So we can kind of see right now that they may not grab much, but obviously with some tuning, they can still do that. And then they grab the other three. And then we can still see that the nuts grab from the human player station and get that just fine. So we actually had time left over at the end of autonomous, but they have 14 as opposed to the blue lines is four. So starting off with a pretty early lead, uh, so that'll go right into Teleop, so we'll see uh, Team Calamari clearing the gate and actually intaking right off the ramp. So that's something we're going to have to be watching out for this entire match, uh, and that's a strategy that I feel like we will see a lot more of because that will be limiting what the other alliance can get from their zones. So we then see, obviously, 61-33, the nuts at the bottom, shooting far constantly, um, and that's just what they do this entire match. And we see, yeah, there's there's Team Calamari again opening that gate and grabbing from there. Uh, we can see them, and they we see that they're going to pretty much shoot from the same place the entire match. And Blue Alliance is going to figure this out pretty quickly. And we actually see Robokai push them and cause two of the balls to go outside the field. So this is something that they're going to have to watch out for because this is going to help uh, actually... The blue alliance to be able to make sure that the red alliance can't score so having to change up strategies but then we see there they go we see uh calamari trying to do that and we see them actually changing strategies and going to the human player station which is something that whenever we watch the entire match i mean we can see in whatever um strategies are kind of not really uh that's not really the strategy that this red alliance has they're trying to go to there as little as possible and obviously that makes sense because then the blue alliance doesn't have any sort of stock in their human player station to grab the artifact so they're just going to get the ones from the ramp and so blue alliance is kind of at this starvation point so they kind of have to do the exact same thing but yeah we see um team uh the nuts obviously going right for the blue human player station and we see uh team calamari grabbing it from the ramp whenever they clear it here they go again and do it so we can kind of see that they're they're quick at what they do, and then they're quick at shooting and everything. So here's an interesting point um, that I was actually really surprised that this uh, red alliance did. So this blue alliance robot is circled, and we can see that they're right next to their human player station. So they could just drive over and get penalties from both of these red alliance robots. But they had you can see that their uh, their spin dexter was spinning, 
and causing had some sort of jam or something. So they didn't actually move. So that went allowed for the Red Alliance to go and grab six artifacts from the Blue Human Alliance station without any sort of contention, which is really impressive. And we still see Robokai trying to mess with Team Calamari and not being able to do it. And we see them going again for this, this ramp. Um, this strategy here is something that is really, you know, something that I didn't think much about because obviously, you know, you have to, you have to be worried that the other Alliance will come into the, the tunnel and you can get penalties. But overall, I mean, this is something that I feel like we're going to start to see a lot more as time goes on because teams are going to start to have wider intakes. I mean, we saw it with Pokevolts and Leviathan Robotics that they have these wide intakes that they can intake from right off the ramps. Um, and another team like Team Calamari actually was very impressed that they were able to do that with as easy as they are. But Team Calamari also has other things up their sleeves like an air sword, but we will get to, uh, they can, you can see that throughout the match. So we will continue on and we can see that, you know, they're going to put those up real quick. While the nuts isn't as fast as Team Calamari, they are deadly consistent and we can see, you know, Robokai knows exactly where Calamari is going to go. So they're just going to, they're just going to block them out, right? Shut them out, get them out of there where they need to be. And then just, you know, Calamari just was able to put those up again. And so, um, you know, we're able to see that this, man, this Red Alliance is kind of, they're killing it with what they're having to go up against with this Blue Alliance. I mean, this Blue Alliance is really struggling. Red Alliance having 47 right now, Blue Alliance having 18. There's not much that this Blue Alliance can really do other than prevent the Red from scoring. So we can kind of see that there's some, there's some traffic down at the bottom. But overall, I mean, it's a great, really great match. So uh, we're just going to, see this and we can see that there's actually some pinning up against the gate here but i don't think this resulted in a penalty or much of a penalty because of the fact that this red alliance robot was already actually going to clear the gate so overall i mean it's a, it's a really good match we can kind of see that as time is going on that this red alliance is just zooming around the field and grabbing from wherever they can to just make sure that they can be scoring as fast as possible and we have 12 seconds left and they're still scoring uh Team Calamari, right, they're still getting banged around at 8 seconds left, and then they decided, rather than going and scoring, to just go to the human player station, or the, the park station, and just sit there, right? So, at the end of the match, we ended up having two partial parks on the Red Alliance, and then one full park and one partial park. Obviously, the full and the partial on the Blue Alliance are not actually in the proper corresponding places. That's just how they happen to be ended up. So... Obviously, we can see that this was a very high-scoring match, right? And so whenever we go to the final scores, we can see that the final score was 230 to 128. So very impressive. And we can kind of see that, you know, uh, Red Alliance put up 14 in both left and auto, and then the Blue Alliance only put up four. So huge, huge difference going straight into the match, right? And then going from Teleop, we see that this Red Alliance put up 49, Classified one overflow, that's 50, right? It's not the highest number we've seen, but they were staying to the same strategies and trying to go up against this blue that was putting up some defense, and they were doing really impressive, and so it may not be that they were scoring as high, but the strategy is something that everybody needs to start to consider is grabbing right out of the ramp. Obviously, again, there's the concerns of being in the Alliance Tunnel, uh, whenever the other alliance is over there because then you can get penalties but this is just something that's really impressive and then the blue alliance only had 22 so not the highest match we've seen but still very impressive in terms of the strategies differences that we've seen uh this red alliance just going to the pretty much the blue human player station the entire time without any opposition is really something that is quite um, interesting to me and quite impressive because I feel like we'll see a lot more of that as time goes on. We'll see that through states and regionals and everything that teams will start to be smart and try to stifle how much the uh, opponent's human player station can have there so that they have as little chance as possible to be able to get more artifacts from the human player station safely without actually taking those risks. So. We could see strategies that one is actually clearing the gate and grabbing from there and the other one's going to the uh their human player station so that 
both sides of the field actually have intakes and so you can't really prevent teams from getting from either place because then you can penalize them in either place so overall the strategy that we see here is something that I know that we're hopefully going to see more of as time goes on. Overall, let me know what you think. Let me know what you guys thought of grabbing right off the ramp and into the intake. Let me know if you guys think that that's gonna be something that is going to change and something that's going to continue to be prominent or is that just a, this was a really good match of us demonstrating that. But until then, stay up to date on all fun robotics network news and this is Anthony signing off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Studica Robotics is inspiring teams to build better robots with their new array of FTC team options. Check out their updated bevel gears and Maverick hex shaft motors, plantier gearbox options, and 6mm hex components and shafts for extreme power transmission. Go to studica.com robots to learn more and apply for discounts. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu first.